Do you have a baby bench press? You've got no idea how to bust through that plateau that you've been stuck at since high school. You have no idea what that problem might be. You're sick of being out pressed by everybody else in the gym. If that's you, I'm gonna go deep into the number one problem behind everybody's bench press. What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from Garagestrength.com and we're gonna go deep into the topic of the number one issue behind the bench press. Please comment down below if you deal with this exact same issue. So at Garage Strength, we've had multiple guys bench over 500 pounds completely raw. Multiple women in high school that have benched over 225 pounds for reps. We've had high school football players that can bench 225 for over 20 reps that have gone on to play at Power 5 football schools. And what we've done over the years is we've been able to diagnose the consistent issues behind bench pressing and understand what we need to do to try to push everybody's bench press so that it can then transfer either to a bigger bench press or carry over more effectively to the sports performance realm. And so that's what we've done in the Plateau Breaker bench press program that we've put together. But today we're gonna go over that number one issue. So what is it? The number one problem that we see is always inside the way the elbows track in the bench press. And so what does that mean? What we want to look for when we're benching is that we, when we take that bar off the rack, we want our shoulder blades to be packed in. And if you watch the bench press physiology video where we cover this topic, you're understanding how to set up on that lift off, how to go through the eccentric portion of the lift. If you haven't checked that out, please go check that out and then come back and we can go over how the elbows need to play in the bench. And so the elbows always need to be directly underneath our wrists, directly underneath our hands. And what that does is that establishes the groove. And so that is going to also establish what muscles are being recruited and how your upper body is working together to establish that big bench press. And so what we've noticed over the years is three consistent issues. And so regarding the elbows, we need to make sure that we have elbow stability. And so what does that mean? Elbow stability means that we, we don't wanna see throughout the lift that our elbows are moving all over the place. We wanna make sure that our shoulder blades are packed in, our shoulder blades are retracted, and our lats and our pecs are co-contracted. And on top of that, we have to create a slight co-contraction between our bicep and our tricep. That means that our bicep and our tricep are gonna be firing together to make sure that that elbow joint is stable. And when that is stable, that horizontal adduction will be controlled by the pec and the anterior delt. And that's gonna create that shelf on the back side, that retracted upper back is going to create a nice foundation to drive off of and to have elbows that are stable is absolutely key. So the second aspect around the elbows is when we start to see the elbows tucking in. This is one of the most consistent issues that we see, especially with quarterbacks, even lacrosse players, baseball players, anybody who's got a little bit weaker shoulders, they tend to tuck in and they'll flare in their upper chest and in their upper back, okay? So the upper back flares while their elbows tuck in. And what this is happening is that the body is trying to recruit more from the triceps because their shoulders are a little bit weaker and their shoulders lack the ability to coordinate together. They struggle to issue a co-contraction and that's extremely important. That's something that we really, really have to comprehend is that to make sure that our elbows don't tuck in, we've got to make sure that our upper back is set, our shoulder blades are set, and that we can issue a nice drive and a nice groove in that elbow joint as we're finishing the lift. So that third aspect behind the elbows is elbow flaring, okay? So what ends up happening when our elbows flare here 
is that we lose all retraction again and we try to force the weight, the load, to get more onto our pecs and a little bit more onto our shoulders because our long head of our tricep is not coordinating very well and we're losing that stability in the elbow and it's trying to shift that stress towards our pecs but what ends up happening then is we're, we get a little bit internally rotated and we can't coordinate that upper body together and our joint, our shoulder joint becomes extremely unstable. And when that happens, it puts a ton of stress on our shoulder joint and that's gonna lead to a lot of overuse injuries and possibly even tearing of our labrum. So we need to make sure, again, that we are externally rotated in our shoulder blades and that we've got our shoulder blades packed and our lats are contracted along with our pecs and our triceps and our biceps are co-contracted as well. And that's gonna to lead to greater execution of the bench press. So now we got five tips to fix that elbow flare. So the first thing that we're gonna start off with is we want our shoulders to be stable. Okay, so to be stable, we have to utilize and strengthen our shoulder joint through dumbbell external rotations. So that's the number one tip to keeping your shoulders healthy is that if you use dumbbell external rotations two to three days a week, that shoulder joint is gonna get stronger and in turn, you're gonna have greater proprioception so that when you do set up on the bench, the shoulder joint is stable and it can control that elbow joint and the groove that the elbows are looking for. Tip number two for the elbows is that I love using close grip incline. The close grip incline is an awesome exercise that's gonna force your shoulders and your upper pecs to coordinate with the long head of your tricep. So if you can understand that by getting your shoulders and your pecs and your triceps to recruit together, now that's going to carry over greater to improved muscular coordination. So then when we get on the flat bench, our shoulders, our pecs, and our triceps are gonna recruit and coordinate more effectively, and the power output is then gonna be a lot higher, and the elbow joint is gonna remain stable. That third tip to controlling the elbow joint, learn how to do dips effectively. I can tell you from personal experience, the more that you can dip, the better your bench press is gonna be. I've dipped over 300 pounds attached to a belt at a body weight of 250 pounds, and that has helped me learn how to retract in my upper back and it's learned how to get my triceps to coordinate with my pecs as well and that leads to a very very stable elbow joint and a very stable lockout when you get to the finish of the bench press if you can execute the dips properly make sure that you're not here with your shoulders but you're actually retracted back those hands are directly underneath your elbow joint and then you execute as effectively as possible. And the usage of the dips will dramatically improve the way that you retract and the way that you lock out in the bench press. Tip number four for controlling your elbows, clap push-ups. This might sound rudimentary, it might sound crazy, but if we can think about what we covered in the stretch shortening cycle video for plyometrics, we can understand that clap push-ups is a upper body plyometric. And we use these all the time at Garage Strength. We use them in the Plateau Breaker program that's 12 weeks long, that's available at garagestrength.com. It needs to be understood that clap push-ups forces your body to co-contract in the lats and in the pecs, and it also forces your triceps and your biceps to co-contract. So we have a stable elbow joint and we have a stable shoulder joint. And when we have two joints that are stable working together, now they're gonna put out a tremendous amount of power together and coordinated effectively. And it's going to dramatically increase that lockout speed. So we've had athletes here on site in high school simply improve their bench press by over 75 pounds by doing clap push-ups every single night, 50 clap push-ups every single night for three months, and we've added 75 pounds. These are simple exercises that you can do to dramatically increase the stability of those two joints. 
Tip number five, this is more of a simple cue. Put the pinkies down, okay? So this is gonna be for somebody who tends to be a little bit more unstable in the upper back. If they think about the pinkies down when they're grabbing that bar, and we love to use fat bars and love to use this cue because it makes you increase that proprioception in your pinkies. And when you start to increase the proprioception in your hands, now your prime movers are going to recruit more effectively. So if you can coach somebody who tends to flare, coach them with the cue of pinkies down. Now all of a sudden that forces them to be a little more stable in their shoulder girdle, a little more stable in their elbows, and their forearms are gonna remain more stable, and that's gonna help drive that bar through that optimal motor path. We know that elbows are the number one problem in the bench press. Use these five tips to increase the groove of how your elbows are functioning, and this is going to lead to a crazy increase in your bench press over time. If you head over to garagesrank.com, you can pick up our Plateau Breaker Bench Press Program where we utilize these tips. We set up a 12-week periodized program to help you bust through that plateau. Again, comment down below. Let us know what your problems are on the bench press or any other lifts. Please like, subscribe, ring that notification bell so that every single video that we put out you're going to get so that you can constantly make those gains in the weight room and then transfer that over to the sports performance realm. I'll see you guys on the bench. Peace.